Look guys, a dead moth that I found outside. I breed a lot of moths myself, but this one was a wild animal, not my pet. So I decided to investigate it. Hmm, I was just walking outside in my garden when I found this. A dead moth. This is Mormo Maura, the old lady moth. I am from the Netherlands, a small country in more northern Europe, and where I live we don't have that many species of huge moths, at least not as huge as, as the ones that I breed on my channel. So finding this species is impressive for me. Mormo Maura, the old lady moth, seems to have one generation per year in my country. The moths can be locally common, especially in regions near edges of lakes, rivers and generally water. The moths are strongly tied and bound to water. They can also be common in parks and gardens, in swamps or swamp-like habitats and variegated, variegated forests. During the day the moths hide, but at night they come out to feed. These moths actually don't visit flowers as far as I know, and prefer to feed on rotting fruits, tree sap and mildew. Caterpillars feed on a wide variety of herbs and shrubs. Although the species is common sometimes, people are often not aware of the existence of this moth, for they are very shy and live a hidden lifestyle. But I know how to bring them out. Finding this dead specimen means that this moth is here around me. Somewhere in this area, this species is present. But how can we find them? Finding moths can be really hard. In this episode, I'm going to look for the old lady moth, Mormo Maura. And I, have, I know exactly what to do, because I have a special trick up my sleeve that allows us to attract them. Let's get started. This is Bart Coppens, your sexy moth king. And today I'm going to cook for moths. And we have to be a little bit quiet because there are people asleep in this house. But I'm still awake. Let's go. First, I add some Dutch applesauce. We call it appelmoes. And it's what plebs here add to their food. It is thick and rich in sugars. Secondly, I'm adding some apple syrup or apple stroop. Americans watching this keep in mind that Dutch syrup is completely different in texture and flavor than what you guys call syrup. I basically added an entire container. Thirdly, you add sugar, a lot of sugar. Sugar is one of the main things that moths want to have in their diet. No matter if they feed on flower nectar, tree sap or rotting fruit in the wild, it's all just sugary liquid in the end. Next you can add some bananas. Banana is a great agent for fermentation as well. Next, heat it up and stir. Please note, it does not have to be cooking or boiling. It's good to heat it a little to kill off microorganisms though, and to dissolve the sugars that make the paste a little bit more homogeneous. Next, pour the mixture in a container to store it for a few days. You can use any type you like. Re recommended are glass jars, but I use an empty yogurt container in this case. And now the most important ingredient for me, beer. It's important to add the beer after cooking it. This is because the alcohol in the beer is one of the main things that will attract moths. 
Secondly, the yeast in the beer will encourage the mixture to ferment. Fermentation is a process in which sugars are slowly converted into alcohol. That's why we don't add the beer before cooking. Heating the beer will evaporate the alcohol and kill the yeast that we need to be alive. Secondly, you can close the lid on top of the container and store it in the fridge for two days. This is important because the mixture it takes a little while to ferment. Fermentation is an important aspect uh, that makes the bait a little bit more attractive to moths, but the process usually takes a few days to get going. The next thing you can do is you can slaughter it on trees. Where you place the bait is actually very important. The best place to place it is on tree bark, a few meters from the ground. Moths don't like coming down to the floor, you see, where they are more vulnerable. They prefer to sit on branches or trees. Make sure to apply the paste during the day and not at night. It takes a few hours for the bait's aroma to disperse. So make sure to apply it in daylight. Also make sure that it isn't raining since the rain can wash your bait away. I have some leftover bananas and also place them on a branch. Bananas can also attract moths pretty well and most sugary fruits in general. Although it is a less powerful attractant than my bait, it sometimes still draws in nice pieces of moths by themselves. Next you wait for the sun to go down. Only when darkness finally falls, the moth will arrive in the middle of the night. Oh look guys, there we are in the middle of the night. And many moths have arrived, as you can see. Wow, such an amazing result. Uh, oh wait, you can't see anything, can you? It's dark. Let me fix that for you, for a moment. This is Bart Coppens, in the middle of the night. <laughs> hey guys, we have night vision now. This channel has been doing so well. It has grown so much. And despite being completely demonetized, you guys have sent me a lot of donations. So we have fancy gadgets now, now like night vision. Isn't that crazy? Look, I can see myself in the darkness. But it also means that now we're able to film insects without them noticing me in the complete darkness. That's pretty crazy if you ask me. Let's see if anything comes by. This little moth here has no clue that I'm here. But because of my advanced night vision camera, we are able to observe these creatures in a way that would otherwise never be possible for YouTube. So this camera has an infrared setting called Night Shot. As you can see it works rather excellently. Thank you. 
old lady moth is an interesting species of Nocturidae, or an owlet moth. It's definitely one of the bigger species of European Nocturidae, that I know of at least. It mostly lives near water, in river valleys, meadows, bogs and as well as in shore areas of streams, ponds and lakes. The larvae feed on various herbaceous uh, plants in the early stages, such as salix or willow, rumex or dock or sorrel, Senecio or stinking willy, Toxaracum or dandelion, and much more types of plants. Later it also feeds on various decorous trees and shrubs and becomes more polyphagous. These moths are commonly found from June to September. I seem to observe the most individuals on warmer nights that are at least 18 degrees Celsius or warmer at night. On colder nights I find them a bit more rarely, but it's also possible, but in lower numbers. A fun fact is that the species may actually be common in your area without you realizing it. The moths live a very hidden lifestyle. During the day, they hide deeply in shelters, such as inside uh, birdhouses that are abandoned, under bridges, in caves, garden sheds, and generally dark and cool areas. In the middle of the night they become a bit more active. One thing is, uh, that is interesting to remember is that Mormo Maua it avoids artificial light and is therefore more rarely collected in the traps of moth trappers. This may give an impression that the species is more rare than it actually is, since entomologists commonly use light traps with artificial light to study moths. But this species isn't uh, very attracted by those light traps it seems. Therefore, the best way to monitor and study them is to actually bait them using the bait method to draw them in. The first night was a success. I got some moths for photography, but don't worry, I will release them back into the wild later. Other species well, were also attracted, such as this large yellow underwing, Noctua pronuba. So before we end the episode, let me give you a quick guide to baiting moths. This method is an easy way for anyone to study moths in their own backyard. Anyone can do it really. Now before we begin, this presentation uses copyrighted photos and illustrations which I am allowed to use under fair use law, which allows me to use these images in a transformative and educational way. This video is demonetized and I gain nothing from this. And for non-commercial purposes, the fair use law allows me to use these materials and photos. Entomologists, when looking for moths, commonly use the light trapping method. Using this method, moths are basically lured with artificial lights 
and a white sheet. This method is very effective. But did you know that there's also other ways to attract moths? Today I'm going to tell you about an alternative method. Baiting or sugaring moths. With this method you can attract moths that avoid light. Believe it or not, there's actually some species of moths that are not attracted by artificial lights. Using this method, which is the sugaring method, you can actually monitor, study and catch species that would otherwise not be attracted to your moth trap. And thus expanding the amount of species that you are able to study. The sugaring method can also be used in supplement with moth trapping with a traditional light. This way entomologists can collect a wider number of species. Ingredient number one. If we want to cook moth bait, the first thing you need is fruit. Fruit that is rich in sugar is preferred. My personal recommendation are peaches, bananas or kiwi. These seem to be powerful attractants for moths. The second ingredient should be syrup. Apple syrup is the one that I often use, but traditional maple syrup could also work. Or even honey. What really matters in the end is that you add something thick and sugary. Important ingredient number three is something alcoholic. You see, moths don't really smell sugar that well. It is alcohol that is the volatile compound that they are mainly attracted to. Why that is? Well, I will explain it later, but for now you need to concentrate and remember this. Alcohol is important and adding alcohol to your bait will make it many, many times more attractive. Recommendations are wine, beer, but also rum seems to go well. Ingredient number four, extra sugar. You can use brown or refined white sugar and add it to the mixture as I did in my video today. Sugar is important, it is the main ingredient of the diet of moths and one of the main things, well, that they, um, that they judge basically. If the sugar content is high, the bait will be attractive to the moths and they will be, uh, have a stronger incentive to, to, to keep feeding basically. So there is that. Um, some people claim brown sugar works better than white sugar, but I'm not actually sure if this is true. Anyway, as long as you add a lot of sugar, you should be golden. Finally, what you do is you add all these ingredients together, mash them into a paste and heat it. Try cooking or heating it into a, um, until it's a, a thick, viscous syrup syrupy goo basically that's what you need to have it um it's recommended that it isn't very uh liquidy it uh, should not run off the tree it's it needs to be gooey so you can actually smear it on the trees you know that's important and by cooking uh, the mixture you can evaporate the excessive moisture water until it becomes a more thick more thick bait Another recommendation is don't add the alcohol before cooking it. If you add alcohol to your mixture and you cook it, it'll most likely evaporate. I add it as an afterthought. Next, put a mixture in jars and wait one or two days. Don't immediately apply it to the trees. The mixture basically needs to ferment for a few days so the ingredients can settle and the bait becomes more attractive. Fermentation creates more volatile compounds and uh, attracts more moths. Next, apply it to a tree or a wooden pole also works in some cases. What you can do is you can use a spoon or a brush. What you should do is you should paint it over the surface and attempt to cover a large surface area. That means you should spread it out and smear it out all over the tree. Don't add a lot of it on a small space. Try to increase the surface area 
that is uh, smeared by your bait. It will make it smell more strongly and attract more insects. I was going to show you a recipe here, but you know what? I have something better. I encourage everybody watching this video to try this out and share your personal recipe in the comments, including the results you had with this. This way, everybody can share their method and what personally works for them. So what are you going to attract with using this bait? Well, if you use the sugaring method, one of the main types of moths that you will attract are the noctuids or the owlet moths. Owlet moths, especially if you live in uh, Europe or the United States or perhaps Canada or Russia, anywhere that's basically temperate, the noctuids will be the majority of uh, species that will be attracted to bait. That's because noctuids aren't very picky and uh, in the wild also seem to feed off things like tree sap and rotten fruits. So of course, when we emulate this with bait, the noctuids will be uh, one of the main species of moths that you will see on your bait. Baiting is also very good for attracting underwing moths. These are basically moths of the genus Catocala. These moths can be common in uh, the Palearctic ecozone. There's over 200 species and they are very strongly attracted to bait. In the wild they are also fruit feeding and then naturally they are attracted to fallen and rotting fruits which is actually the main part of their diet in the wild. So any sugary and alcoholic bait will basically easily attract these creatures. Uh, the underwing moths are actually um, just like the uh, uh, old lady moths you saw in my video are not strongly attracted to artificial lights. So baiting them with sugary bait is actually one of the best methods to catch and capture or photograph underwing moths in your area. So why are these insects attracted to this? Well, the thing is in the wild, sugar is somewhat scarce of a resource, but there's various ways in which Lepidopterans, which are butterflies and moths, can find it in their environment. Tree sap is one example. Tree sap is often rich in sugary liquids, but also fallen fruits um, are a common source and popular source of uh, sugary liquid for many species of butterflies and moths. Interestingly, there are also many species that feed on flowers, but it seems that uh, moths that feed on flowers are less attracted to the sugary bait. Well, that makes sense because if you think about it, a flower is more or less also a visual experience. And therefore species that are attracted to flowers and that naturally drink a lot of flower nectar will be less attracted to bait. That's why a lot of species that feed on flowers actually don't come to bait. However, the species that in the wild feed on rotten fruits and tree sap are more inclined to come to bait, such as the underwing moths and noctuids that I discussed earlier in this episode. Um, alcohol is one of the volatile compounds in nature that is also associated with finding sugar. Think about it. If uh, fruits like apples fall from the tree and begin to ferment and rot, what happens is uh, yeasts will basically start converting the sugars into alcohols. And because of this fermentation, alcohol will be released. Now the thing is that alcohol is a very volatile compound, that means it uh, disseminates more easily. It basically evaporates. Uh, it evaporates much more easily. So if you are a moth and you are trying to, feed, uh, trying to find some sugary fruits, then it's actually a smarter idea to uh, sense alcohol than it is to sense sugar. Because sugar is not very volatile, so it's difficult to smell. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't dissipate it easily through the air, but alcohol does. It can carry very far, since alcohol is a volatile. And this is why so many species are attracted to things that contain alcohol and sugar. And it's this exact mixture of alcohol and sugar that will attract many species to your bait. 
but the species who will be attracted, well, they will basically be the same species that naturally feed on fallen fruits and tree sap, for example, in the wild. I just thought it was interesting to know. Now, some species are strictly fructivorous and don't come to flowers. Underwing moths, for example, they, uh, I've never seen or heard of any underwing moth ever visiting a flower, although they are very attracted to um, rotting fruit and sugary stuff. That's because they lack the visual stimulus to visit flowers. And I think the volatiles in nectar and flowers are different from the volatiles in rotting fruits, for example, for fructivorous species. That being said, there's also a lot of noctuids who visit flowers, but will also come to bait. But this basically explains why this is so popular for many species. It emulates their food sources. So when is the best time to learn moths? Hmm. Well, you can do this most of the time of the year, to be honest. Opnieuw. So when should you do this? When is the best time to attract moths with bait? Interestingly, it seems that uh, there's a few moments per year in which baiting seems to work the best. Now I'm going to generalize because there's many countries and many climates and many ecosystems on our planet. And to be honest, we can't really generalize when the best time of the year to uh, attract moths is because that's different for every country. But generally, uh, in the northern hemisphere, it is best to do it in late summer and autumn. That's because in late summer and autumn, flowering plants become more scarce. And moths are more a force to uh, be attracted to bait than to nectar. So you will find a higher amount of species. Secondly, there are many species of moths that naturally feed on rotting fruits. But rotting fruits are generally are not available in nature until after summer at least, or autumn. And that's also when most moth species fly that are associated and attracted to such kind of uh, such sources of food, such as underwing moths or the old lady moth you saw in this video, tend to fly uh, from July, September, October, November, etc. So uh, during these times of the year, you are more likely to attract moths. Another good moment is early in spring like really early in spring, because um, nectar can also be very scarce in spring. In spring is when all the uh, flowers basically begin to open and uh, slowly begin to flower. Uh, but before that happens, there is a short amount of time in which very flowers are blooming and nectar is scarce, forcing more insects to go to alternative food sources, which will make baiting uh, actually more successful. Last but not least, some people have done this in winter. In winter there's very little insect, but not many people know that even in winter there's a small amount of moth species that still fly. You're not going to find high numbers probably, but it's possible to attract unique species in the colder times of the year, so it's always worth a try. One thing to avoid is rain. Now, do moths, do moths hate rain? Actually, there's a lot of moth species that still fly whenever it rains. Especially if it's a mild rain, they don't seem to care. Um, but it's more annoying for your bait, because rain can basically wash away the bait that you've made for your insects. Last but not least, if you're doing this in summer or autumn, moths prefer to, uh, seem to prefer warmer nights. And some of my most successful nights were warm nights. During colder nights, it's possible that the moths don't become active, so you may not catch much at all, sadly. It's good to check temperatures. Sadly, there's a lot of moth species that you are not going to find. This picture depicts a few species that don't have functional mouth parts. On this planet, there's a lot of moth species that cannot eat because they literally lack a mouth. They cannot eat. And uh, this includes the Saturnids, which are so common on my YouTube channel, and also some of my favorite moths, to be honest. But uh, they're not going to be attracted to food because they can't eat. And there's a lot of moth species 
that live like this, for example, Lasiocampidae, leopard moths, uh, many tiger moths, not all of them, but many of them, lack a proboscis and cannot feed. So there's also going to be a lot of moth species that you are never going to find on bait. So keep in mind this only works on a selective amount of species. Hawk moths are also another exception. They almost never come to bait. It's very rare and um, I've been baiting for quite a while right now and I've never found a hawk moth. That's because hawk moths are more focused on visiting flowers that bloom at night, such as this uh, Amorpha achamon that you can see here in this picture. It's a nice species from the United States. And like I said, these moths are more visually oriented and they are more attracted to the visual spectacle that are flowers. But um, flowers also contain different volatile compounds from fermenting fruits. In the wild, sphinges uh, almost never feed from alternative, alternative food sources such as fermenting fruit. So you're not going to find uh, stuff like hog moths on your bait. That being said, never say never. Here's a picture of the elephant hog moth, Delephila alpenor, actually being attracted to bait. This is exceptionally rare. Um, I think this uh, specimen was probably very um, desperate for food. Maybe it was the time of the year um, in which very little flowers were blooming. And if the animals become desperate for food, they may look for other sources of uh, sugar. So uh, never say never. It's possible to attract hog moths using this method, but it's extremely rare. So don't count on it. There's uh, better ways to lure hog moths, such as light trapping. Other encounters. If you are baiting, of course, then um, moths are not going to be the only animals that are going to visit your free food that you put on the table. And what I see a lot personally are slugs. Slugs are, well, many species of slugs are just opportunists and omnivores, and they won't say no to a, a good snack. And uh, alcohol, especially, well, Anything that ferments is also known to attract snails very strongly. In fact, one uh, method that gardeners use to trap slugs is use beer as bait, which will attract them and uh, then they will drown. So yes, especially if it has rained or it's very humid, expect to see a lot of slugs. Mosquitoes may also be attracted. Not, now, what don't, not many people know that uh, male mosquitoes are actually vegetarians. The ones that drink your blood and sting are always the females. So uh, the, the mosquitoes that will be attracted to your bait are also of the harmless kind. They are not interested in drinking your blood. It's the males. And uh, they will definitely love a rich, sugary meal. Ants are also very common. I've had them uh, quite often come to my bait. Especially a lot of species are nocturnal as well. So uh, yes. Of course, ants are the classic animal that we know to be attracted by sugar, so it's no surprise that they are on the list. Uh, interestingly, Opilionus, they are uh, actually not really spiders, Opilions. They are arachnids, but they are completely different from true spiders. And Opilions, they are um, opportunists and scavengers. They will um, also eat, for example, forage on dead animal carcasses, but also on well, in this case, sugary liquids, fruits, etc. And it has happened to me often that I had these guys come to my bait. Last but not least, there is isopods. Isopods also seem to be attracted to bait. I had them quite often. If you are really lazy or on a budget, you can also just use rotting fruit to attract moths. Uh, it's not perfect, but it still works. It's not fancy bait. But you can have a lot of success if you place it in the right places during the right time of the year. Well, here's a giant black witch moth, the Ascaphala odorata. I think most of my viewers know this one. Which is attracted here in a basket of rotting fermenting fruits. You can see some kiwis and plums in there, I think. And uh, yes, these guys are very strongly attracted to rotting fruits. They could also be attracted by bait, of course. But uh, fruit is basically the poor man's version of bait, but it works. 
Here's a very nice picture of several species of uh, giant black witch moth being attracted to what seems like rotten bananas. On top there's also a smaller species, I don't know what it is. But uh, yes, this is a nice picture of the results you can have depending on where you live and the species that are in your region, of course. But uh, this is a very, this can be a very interesting way of attracting moths. If you want to use rotting fruit, recommended are pears and apples, peaches, bananas, and a rotting watermelon. If you use any of these, moths will love them when they start to ferment and rot a little. And you can attract many species if you're lucky. I don't recommend using citrus or anything from the citrus family. It's way too acidic and doesn't seem to attract much insects. My last tip of the day is experiment. Add some weird ingredients to your bait. You never know, you may find a golden recipe. Some baits are more attractive to some species than others. And to attract the species that you like, you could experiment a little with alcohol content. Uh, my tip is don't change the recipe too radically, because if you add something really weird, like peanut butter or two nails, you may not end up attracting any moths at all. As long as it's sugary, you should be good though. You can also experiment by uh, using placing the bait in unconventional places or smearing it on trees in unconventional times of the year, basically. In winter, it's impo possible to attract uh, certain types of winter moths that are uh, active in winter, for example, a time of the year that not many entomologists are thinking about catching insects. So you may find some unusual species. So that was it for today, short video. I just want to say thank you and bye-bye. Last but not least, I want to say I'm sorry for being late. This video was sponsored and paid for by my Patreon, my crowdfunding platform. In fact, I promised this video as a reward for when we reached 19 patrons. Well, that was over a year ago. And right now my channel has over 77 sponsors. So I'm sorry for being late. I promised to make this video, but I guess I forgot about it. Uh, the good news is that if I make a promise, I always keep my word. The bad news is I'm a huge procrastinator, so I keep my word, but I may deliver on my promise very late. In this case, it took me over a year to produce the video that I promised to make. As you can see, there's many other goals too that I'm working on such as a special video about the oak processionary caterpillar, a special video about how to breed tiger moths in captivity, and a special documentary about cabbage white butterflies. These are a few examples. The good news is I am working to deliver on all of these old promises. Uh, they are essentially paid for by my fans and viewers. The good news is they are going to come to my channel, but the bad news is it may take me a while my content takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, and um, writing, script, filming, etc. So, uh, yeah, it's just I'm completely swamped in the production of many videos, as many as I can, to be honest. So you gotta be a little bit patient. Last but not least, consider tipping me and financially supporting this channel. This channel is completely and 100% demonetized by YouTube, and YouTube does not, suppo not uh, support my content and my channel. Instead, I am financially dependent on my viewers and fans. Thankfully, you guys have been generously tipping me, which enables me to produce this video. All the funds that I raise online directly go to my projects such as filming, uh, breeding insects in captivity, buying literature to study, or using my free time to write scripts and read them. Without uh, all of my sponsors, this channel wouldn't exist. Consider becoming a subscriber to my Patreon or consider donating various other ways. And in return, I will give you entertaining and educational videos that are mostly about insects. Thank you and goodbye.